Picture this. A dude's got his submarine going real deep into the ocean, exploring the unknown. But when that bad boy hits its implosion depth, things go south real fast. Today, we're taking a deep dive into what went down when those passengers found themselves at the point of destruction. See, there are two crucial levels of crushing depths underwater. You got the depth that engineers say is the max for diving, and then you got the depth where that submarine straight up implodes. Now, when it comes to Ocean Gate's Titan, it couldn't handle the pressure no more at a limit depth of 4,000 meters. Talk about a real-life nightmare scenario. Guess what, fam? Turns out that thing got wrecked even before hitting rock bottom. Word on the street is, that submarine could only go as deep as 3,800 meters, right where the shipwrecked remains lie on the ocean floor. Now, there are a bunch of theories floating around as to why this time it couldn't handle the pressure, especially considering it had successfully made multiple trips to the Titanic wreckage before. Crazy, right? You're crazy. Let's dive into the deets and unravel this mystery. Without suffering technical failures, the one that has the most support and credibility is that of director of Titanic and Avatar himself, James Cameron, who designed his own submarine with the help of Australian engineers and now holds the record for the deepest voyage into the Mariana Trench, the deepest point in the ocean at about 11,000 meters below sea level. Apart from having descended to the remains of the Titanic more than 30 times, according to Cameron, and confirmed by the Submersible Regulations Bureau Carbon Fiber, the material with which the submersible's main hull was built doesn't have the necessary specs to withstand thousands of pounds of pressure per square inch. As thick as it may be, even though they made it five inches thick. Although very strong, it's still a composite material and doesn't have the same lifespan as titanium and hardened steel, which was used on Cameron's Deep Challenger. That's why with each trip, it weakened to the point where it could no longer resist and once cracked, it ended up disintegrating like a piece of ultra-tempered glass under millions of tons of pressure. Sadly, the Titan sub disintegrates in a fraction of a second, turning into scrap metal just as the signal to the mothership is lost, and communication with the polar ship on the surface is cut off. Pipes and accessories begin to fail as the carbon fiber hull with titanium parts crackles, signaling a structural failure as the hole rattles and creaks before collapsing. The implosion disintegrates everyone on board in one millisecond, instead of slowly seeping in the water, rushes, either trapping air in a bubble at one end of the submersible, or generating so much heat that the hull implodes, killing everyone inside. Body parts are among the rubble, rising upward and now lying just a few feet from the Titanic. Very chilling, but yet comforting, knowing that the pain or suffering was minimal, and it all unfolds so fast that the nerves aren't fast enough to send signals to the brain for them to feel it. It's basically like a Thanos snap. To put it bluntly, the crew became kind of like a human source in the blink of an eye. The anatomy behind this is that it takes time for information like pain to travel through your nerves to the brain and be processed in the case of pain. It takes approximately 100 milliseconds. That is 99 milliseconds more than the implosion took. The incredible thing is that it takes 13 milliseconds to process visual images, which means they disappeared before realizing what they saw. There were five people in the Titan submersible. Suppose they weigh 80 kilos each. That means that there are about 400 kilos of remains that have to go somewhere. So why do they say they won't find them? Well, first we must take into account the heat because the submersible produces a giant air bubble inside. The pressure compresses that air, and when that happens, it heats up to approximately the temperature of the sun, about 5,000 degrees Celsius. The time of exposure is not enough to melt the remains of metals and other materials, but any living beings would be immediately reduced to a paste being expelled at an extremely high speed, becoming available as food for other living beings. Although it sounds horrible is where at some point we are all going to end up. Like this video and comment below what is your thoughts about this crisis, Mysterious Minds.